Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Kazi Magendi, Frank Galindo, and Emily Rentes. The question I want to ask, what is it like to show up as a minority? Kazi, can you kick us off? Awesome. Thank you so much. So as you all know that I am actually leading an organization in rural Kenya, and one of the things is I started this work from a passion. It's driven from passion, which means I didn't have uh, money or set up that really allows someone to move on and lead from an engine that has enough fuel. And just having passion and leading out of passion has really taught me that it's hard actually to do things from this point of view. No one knows you. Nobody knows your name. My name is Kazi. Oh, everyone asks who is Kazi. And you're coming from a rural place where nobody knows. And mm. also from a country where not so many people, I'm, I'm from Kenya and many people know Africa and not Kenya mm. in itself. And then being a woman and also being from a very small tribe in Kenya, that puts me at a very interesting interesting place because Kenya has the big five there's tribes in Kenya so we have the big five and then we have the rest and I'm coming from the rest which is really back from the rest and so doing this work I've realized that it's quite challenging because my voice has to be louder than a normal person who has a platform that can just go and say my name is say Robin and people are like oh Robin from you know but mm. if I say Kazi, people are like, okay, so who are you and what do you do? And that has shown to be true even in, when I'm looking for funding or when I'm trying to find spaces to speak for policy change and other things. And yeah. Mm. Thank you. I think that one of the biggest things that I've always faced is being in places that didn't really understand minorities sometimes in the sense of their framework, their sometimes cognitive dissonance and misunderstanding of things because it came from a place of not exposing themselves to new situations and new perspective. And part of that journey is not to take it personal in the sense of understanding your environment and also knowing your boundaries when it gets to a place where it's unacceptable. But I found in a lot of instances that there's a lot of different unsaid norms when it comes to women, when it comes to minorities, when it comes to um, who gets a seat at the table, who speaks more um, in a group, in a project, when somebody is leading a project, even the participation of members is different sometimes when there's been a woman or a man, right? Or a minority in terms of how much people collaborate and also participate with one another in a way to accomplish something. And when that starts happening, it's very toxic because now it's spilling over to um, not only do you not understand, but you're having no desire to want to understand and to work together because at the end of the day, we do have a common goal, no matter how different I am and how different you are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. No, I agree. And, and culturally, that's um, has such a big impact on how you're able to show up. Right. Well, my background is, is uh, Ecuadorian, right, South American. And so uh, it's a man dominated society. And it's unfortunate. I have two daughters and we've had this conversation actually recently with my wife because a friend of hers who is in the process of getting divorced because she uh, is now single cannot even uh, get a loan from the bank because she's not married. And she has to have the husband's permission to marry again if she decides to marry someone else within a year of the divorce. So just to give you an understanding from my end, how unfair it is culturally for women, as an example, on my end, here in the States, and I was born here, thankfully, I've had the blessing of an education, right? Uh, I speak Spanish, but I don't have an accent. My skin tone isn't that dark necessarily. And so I haven't faced a lot of the challenges that I know uh, family relatives have who came here, who have an accent, who have darker skin, may not have the proper way to um, express themselves because of education or whatnot. And so I hear from them that they've experienced things that are completely different from myself. But I think that for me, people knowing my background uh, as Hispanic, even when I was born here, because I speak the way I speak, look the way I look and, and I'm educated, I think that does help me have mm-hmm. a seat at the table versus someone who could be identical to me, except with those nuanced facets of, of their person that they may not have the same advantage. So that's interesting to me, but, the, but culturally and, and what Kazi was saying before, uh, for you to be where you are and to be a female, I can't imagine how difficult it must be. I don't know if it's gotten easier over the years, if you've seen that uh, from where you are now, where it was, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago, but um, 
when you have everything stacked against you, it just becomes so much harder. And it's so unfair to be, not be able to have that same voice and the same level. I would love to ask a question. This I may be stepping out on a limb here, so help me out. As a classically attractive white woman, I feel like when I'm in a room, I'm responsible for managing the emotions of particularly the white men in the room, but men in general. Have you found that you feel like you're responsible for the emotions of other people and managing them so that you can have a seat at the table and it doesn't become distracting? Absolutely not. Oh. Um, because I am responsible when I realize that somebody else's behavior is now encroaching in my boundaries. And now it's my responsibility to remind them where they are. I can't control other people's behaviors and perceptions and things like that. But if it gets to the point where now it's violating us some type of boundary, I have to speak up for myself. And that comes with assertive communication. It's not aggressive. It's not passive, but it's letting the person know that there's clear boundaries. But I don't think that anybody should be responsible. Oh, no, I don't think they should no. be. Yeah. I think that but I that's have the, been. That's the mindset. And part of it is recognizing it from a place of objectivity where you see it for what it is and you understand that it's there mm -hmm. and not get so emotionally charged and connected where you feel like you need to do something immediately. And then it also mm -hmm. causes judgment. But for the most part, being aware of that so that you know where you stand and where the person stands yeah. so that you can see where those boundaries are. Mm -hmm. Agree with that. Kazi. Yeah, I mean, it's such an interesting question, but it just reminded me as a girl growing up in the rural Kenya, actually in the village, my uncles would actually tell my mom how different I am. I don't have the right word to use, but mm. like my daughter, like sitting around uh, elders, because there's this culture that we have that children should not hang around elderly mm. and older people. And I'm grateful for my parents because they brought us up with that freedom to ask questions and hang around people and so my relatives and those uncles they'll be like why are you so different why are you riding a bike why are you hanging around boys and men and I grew up sitting close to people who are older than me and because of my lack of education so I have a gap of seven years between elementary to high school mm. so those seven years I sat with older people who are doing business and talking about travels and things and so it opened my mind to learn so many things that young women and girls in my rural area would not know and that actually gave me the desire to go back to school mm. but again it was questioned at some point I was called a prostitute or someone was selling her body to men because why are you sitting with me mm -hmm. you're a young girl yeah it's quite an interesting experience to be a minority, I would think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frank, what are your thoughts at this point? There's been such a, a movement for women and, and not just the glass ceiling, right? In corporate America, we, which we hear a lot about, but just things that um, Malala Yousafzai, for example, have done advocating just for education, just the basic rights of women. In this case, I'll talk about women, but you know, it does permeate into culture because culturally, right, we know where Malala comes from and what she went through and mm -hmm. why she went through it. And it's uh, promising to know that we're making progress, but it's just still mm -hmm. saddening and disheartening to think that we have to actually go through the process at all, right? Because mm -hmm. we're all human. And just because someone's from a different culture or a different gender, they don't have the same rights as men, I'm sorry, quite frankly, right? In this uh, society, in the civilization, it's disconcerting. But again, I'm, I'm glad to hear that we have strong voices and advocates that are out there. And for men to be able to advocate for women as well. Again, I'm the father of two daughters and you're darn right. I'm going to teach them to stand up for themselves, to speak up, to be assertive and to do what right. you know is, is accepted for any other uh, race or gender. Mm. They should have the exact same... Uh, the, the exact same limits, right? So that's limitless, really. And so that's what I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, we, we get to that point uh, at, at, in the near future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has been a difficult conversation for me. As a white person, I feel like I don't do enough. As a woman, I feel like I don't stand up as much as I should. I allow people to get away with things that I wish. Looking back, I'm like, why didn't I say something? Because I don't want to deal with the fight and I want to be better. And I need strong people like the three of you on this panel with me to help me be better and be stronger. So thank you so much for having this conversation with me and being, will being willing to do it. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again very soon. Thank you, Dr. Robin. Thank you.